Hello, my name is Lindy Jacobs, and it's an honor to stand before you today to share my family's journey with FTD and shed some light as to what it means to be fighting for a future, because I'm the future face of FTD, the humanity and heartbeat to the cells you study and the target of tau therapies, a positive MAPT genetic carrier. There we go. Dementia has been a household name in my family since the time that I was learning my first words. My grandmother started exhibiting symptoms of FTD in 1990. Because I was so young at the beginning of her symptoms, I was not aware of the what's and the why's. But I did notice the vast difference between Grandma Bev and my other grandmother. Over the years, my grandma's disease progressed slowly. But when her abilities declined and her needs increased, my mother stepped in as her caregiver and voice when she no longer had one. We bore witness to the actions, values, and life lessons that can't be taught with words, only through demonstration. My grandmother passed away in 2006 after 16 years of this disease. Next slide. Shortly after my grandma's passing and my mother's 50th birthday, the changes started to stir within my mother's brain in 2009. She started to silently struggle with language deficits, writing errors, and changes in sleeping habits. She sought medical attention with her primary care physician for these whispers of symptoms who determined them as menopausal and stress-induced. I wish I could say her story was one of simplicity because of the known family history, but it was far from that. It was treacherous, riddled with guilt, embarrassing, isolating, traumatizing, like trying to fight a forest fire with a bucket of water. To tell you all the details of my mom's journey would take hours. So instead, I'll present to you the data from her journey with FTD in numbers. It took eight years to receive an FTD diagnosis for my mom despite the family history. Five doctors sought to gain a diagnosis, three neurologists to accurately diagnose FTD, three seemingly normal MRIs despite FTD changes, one positive genetic marker identified for MAPT, 50-50 odds of passing along the gene to myself and my sisters. <clears throat> 17 attempts at employment on her resume from 2012 to 2017. $200,000 spent in compulsive spending in the first five years of symptoms. One year with no income waiting for SSDI to kick in due to incorrect paperwork given by the social worker. Two jobs I resigned from to focus on the care for my mother. One day per week of lost wages for myself to dedicate towards this care. Zero is the number of skilled nursing facility options because of her age, cost, and FTD diagnosis. Four known events of financial exploitation and roughly $4,000 spent per year on life and long-term care insurance to pay for my future FTD care. Three trespassing notices, four shoplifting violations, three times I bailed my mom from jail, 10 times I appeared in court on her behalf, one collect call taken from my mom as an inmate, two letters from jail, one mug shot three court-ordered mental health evaluations, two different determinations of incompetency to stand trial. $295 is the cost to file for emergency guardianship, four different county evaluations for mental stability and resources. Zero is the amount of resources she qualified for due to age, assets, and diagnosis. Six lawyers used throughout her journey with FTD. 36 total hours we received outside help, all within the last six weeks of her life, which was paid for out of pocket by our family. 25 years of her friendships discarded because they couldn't handle her change. Two known sexual pre predators who exploited her. 100 plus hours I've spent in therapy to work through the guilt, sadness, and anger that comes from having a parent with FTD. 98% documented penetrance of MAPT five family members with an FTD diagnosis. Three daughters with positive genetic test results for MAPT. Six grandchildren who now have a 50% chance of inheritance. 
insurmountable is the amount of fear possessed that my future would look like my mother's and my children will suffer as I did. In 2021, just four weeks after my mother passed away, I was presented with the voluntary opportunity to undergo my own genetic testing. With MAPT being autosomal dominant, it's essentially a genetic coin toss, which seems like such a flippant action. But knowing that my future was based on something so rudimentary like how the coin lands, it seemed irresponsible to not proceed with my own genetic testing. I was certain that this test would change me profoundly. However, I underestimated the actual impact it would have. I tested positive. During the discovery appointment, very few words surfaced as my entire world felt like it was imploding, like there wasn't room to breathe, and maybe, just maybe, this was someone else's results. The gutting pain and anguish of these, these results was deep and cutting. For fear of my future, but more so, what about my daughters? I just kept thinking, this doesn't end with me. I possibly gave this to them, almost like an infection. I determined in that moment of deep despair that I could let this news consume me, live in self-pity, allow the feeling of doom to overshadow during this period of waiting, or I could use this time to have self-awareness, to make modifiable changes, to use my voice now to advocate for myself and my children, and to put myself in the research pathway. I always think, how different would my mom have lived if she had this foresight? After I ripped off the genetic testing Band-Aid, my sisters felt confident to undergo testing. Their tests looked like mine, all positive, which means that the next generation of our six children are all at risk for having this mutation. They will also have to endure the stressful and emotional process of genetic testing themselves, with the potential of having a future skewed by what that means for their life and the considerations they will have to make for their future relationships and life planning while most likely navigating this future without us, their mothers. Essentially, the FTD story will continue in my family's future generations until there is something to stop it. Since that appointment, I've immersed myself into FTD advocacy work while being as involved as I can. I've been a research participant in over 17 different studies, serve on five different FTD-related boards, I've been an invited speaker to multiple research conferences, submitted research abstracts, completed multiple interviews for applications, organizations, health articles, blog posts, research labs, pharmaceutical design panels, and podcasts. And I will be featured in a PBS documentary for dementia in 2025. Most recently, I have helped develop and co-found a nonprofit organization called CureMap TFTD. CureMap TFTD is a nonprofit organization created to mobilize families and raise awareness of the MAP T genetic mutation causing FTD to assist a global network of families and to advocate for trials that will lead to a cure. We have created a centralized space for partners in the field to locate families impacted by MAP T and to work synergistically in a proactive approach to lead to a cure. Our organization currently has 20 family kindreds representing over 400 individuals around the world guided by a prestigious scientific advisory board to hopefully overcome the hurdles in MAPT development and move progress forward. Knowing FTD is in my future, I'm most fearful that my children and husband will have to be caregivers in a flawed system, that they will experience isolation because my behaviors are too challenging, embarrassing, and inappropriate, endure the gripping heartache as they watch the best parts of what makes me, me, slip into someone unrecognizable. So I'm living my life with the power and vibrancy of a bright light so that when FTD begins to steal and diminish and things become darkened, the memory of the brightness I once cast will provide them with the strength to endure when all they'll want to do is give up, that they will know how hard I fought to stay here. To my beautiful girls, I'm so sorry about what lies ahead of us. If I could, I would give anything to prevent and protect you both from the same hurt, anguish, and loss I endured because of FTD. It seems so unfair that we had to lose my mom, your Gaga, only to be facing that same potential loss of myself. Please know I'm fighting so hard for our future to change our story. If there isn't a cure, treatment, or answer by the time my mind changes, I hope that the life we lived until then will be enough. 
one you can look back on and feel the deepest love and support and that those memories provide you the comfort you need. Girls, we have but one life to live, and I promise that we're going to fully do so together until we can't. I'm so sorry for what you will have to endure. I wouldn't wish it upon anyone, but I know you both have hearts as big as the sky, so I know you'll make it through. I've done everything in my power to make this journey easy for you logistically, but I can't ease the emotional pain of losing a mom. So, you'll live life as a family to the fullest, creating all the memories, going on adventures, and living with passion, purpose, and positivity. The life we create now, I hope to be so full, bursting at the seams, that it will sustain you during the moments that are hard, that you will always be able to remember me as I am right now. You two are my yesterdays, todays, and tomorrows, always. I love you, Mom. My hope is that I've shared some of that light with you all to guide you in your life-saving work, that when things get challenging or frustrating, that you'll be reminded of mine and my daughter's faces to surge forward. Without your work, my future is predetermined and dark. My time is limited and history will repeat itself. The time to act is now to ensure that MAPT-FTD can no longer extinguish the light of this vibrant life. Thank you.